Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be chatting about the books that I ended up reading in the month of February. I didn't read a lot this month. I only read three books. One of those was a physical book. Two were audiobooks that I listened to on the way to work. It was just one of those months where I couldn't seem to get into anything that I wanted to read. But I did end up really, really enjoying the book that I finally finished. And for the most part, I also enjoyed the audiobooks that I read. So lots to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. My least favorite book of the month was The Space Between Worlds, which was the Tea Leafs Book Club pick of March. We have a whole live show, which is actually on my channel, and we have spoiler and non-spoilery thoughts about that book. So if you guys are interested in more of our thoughts, make sure you check out the live show because it's a lot more in depth than what I'm going to get into here. But basically, this is a sci-fi novel, the first sci-fi novel that we've actually read as part of our book club. And it takes place in this universe where there are different worlds, and basically there are people that are able to travel in between the worlds. However, you're only able to travel to a world if yourself on that world is dead. So our main character is Kara and she has done a very poor job of staying alive on many of the other Earths. And so she basically is able to travel between these different worlds. One day she finds out, however, that one of her other selves has been suspiciously killed. So starts this thriller meets sci-fi with a few um, elements of romance in there too. So I listened to this one on audiobook and I don't think that that was the best choice for me because this does have quite a few characters. It does have a lot of different elements. You have to get used to the world building. And I felt like on audiobook, I wasn't able to quite sink into it and grasp all the details to make this reading experience really come to life for me. I thought the idea was super creative, but I thought the execution was a little bit strange and the pacing was a little bit off for me. I think that there are people that will really enjoy this book. I think it has over four stars on Goodreads. But for whatever reason, I really struggled to relate to this book and get into it. So I ended up giving it actually a three stars on the show, but I'm downgrading that to a 2.5 stars after thinking about it a little bit more. But of course, as I said earlier, if you guys wanna hear more of our thoughts from all the ladies of the Tea Leaves Book Club, I will have the live show linked down below. While I'm talking about Tea Leaves Book Club, our book club is actually partnered with a company called Sangra, and they make book sleeves and bookmarks and other bookish goodies inspired by the books that we read every month, which is really, really awesome. So they actually sent me a bookmark and a book sleeve inspired by our January pick, which was the Midnight Library. And their stuff is just absolutely stunning. This is the bookmark that they sent. Gilbert is <laughs> looking at me because he loves this jingle thing and literally will go after it wherever it is. But I've absolutely, absolutely loved using it for um, my books that I'm reading. And I will chat more about this one in my March TBR. Lots of thoughts about this. The book sleeve that was for our January pick looks like this. It has a fun little pocket here. It does fit most hardback books and it has like a little Velcro seal too. Um, and I really, really enjoy it. So if you guys are interested in picking up some bookish goodies, you can head on over to their store, which I will have linked in the description box. And we also have a promo code for 20% off if you do decide to pick anything up from the store. That's enough about tea leaves. If you want to join our book club, we would love to have you. I will have more information about that linked down below. Now onto my other audiobook that I read this month, and that is Paul Simon the Life by Robert Hilburn. So this book requires a little bit of explanation. If you guys watch my January wrap up, you know that I read this book that is a little bit out of my comfort zone, and that is The History of Rock and Roll by Ed Ward. This was a book that just kind of chronicled the origins of the rock and roll genre. It was the first volume, so it went all the way up to The Beatles and The Rolling Stones. Um, while I was listening to that, I kind of became really interested in reading more nonfiction books about music and about musicians. And Scribd also picked up on this, so it started recommending a bunch of musical biographies to me. One of them was Paul Simon the Life. So I decided to pick this book up. And this book caught my eye as soon as I saw it because I grew up with Simon and Garfunkel. I absolutely love Simon and Garfunkel. Um, one of my favorite memories listening to their music was when I went to Yellowstone with my mom and brother. And we literally brought one CD with us for the whole entire trip. And we were just like driving around this park listening to Simon and Garfunkel, the greatest hits. So whenever I listen to their music, I think about that trip. It's one of those bands that I go back and listen to over and over again. And I just absolutely love all of their joints. 
write songs. However, I never had really gotten super into Paul Simon's solo career. For whatever reason, I just like never picked up his other albums. So reading this book both reminded me of my love of Simon and Garfunkel, and it's literally been most of what I've been listening to this month, but also got me into a lot of his solo music, which I am loving. I've been listening to Graceland on repeat all month. But enough about his music. Let me talk a little bit more about the book. So this is a biography. It basically follows Paul Simon throughout his entire life. Growing up in New York, where he met Garfunkel, their beginning of their career together, um, kind of how that fell apart, and the birth of his solo career, um, all the controversies, the romances, everything that you could possibly imagine. And along with it, it talks about a lot of the inspirations between, behind his songs. It talks about behind the scenes stuff of a lot of his most famous concerts. And it was just this immersive, wonderful experience in which I learned so much about um, a musical figure, figure that has been such a huge part of my life, honestly. Overall, I'm really thankful that I did pick up the book. I think it's an, a reading experience that I'm not going to forget anytime soon. In terms of the book itself, um, I listened to this, as I said, on, on Scribd. Really enjoyed the narrator for the audiobook. And overall, the writing was decent. It wasn't anything super special. It wasn't anything to like write home about. And I think the story and Paul Simon as a figure is the star of this, not the writing itself. But um, I think it captured a lot about him. I thought the ending was a little bit abrupt. I, I don't really know how you end a book about Paul Simon because he's just a continuing figure in music and it's hard to wrap up his contribution to rock and roll and folk. But I thought it was a little bit quick in the way that it wrapped up. That's really the only negative thing I would say about it. Overall, I really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to continue this trend of reading um, music related biographies because I have just really been enjoying it. So my favorite book that I read this month by pretty much a mile is The Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. So this book is the prequel to The Hate You Give. I read The Hate You Give pretty close to when it came out actually and I watched the movie last year and I really really enjoyed that whole reading experience. I think I ended up rating it 4 or 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I also read On the Come Up and it was an amazing read again and I thought to myself how can Angie Thomas do this again? How is it possible to write flawless book after flawless book and I honestly think this is her best work. I am going to do a full review about this because I have a lot to say about this book and I don't think I can talk about it all here. But basically this follows Maverick who is Star's dad from The Hate You Give and it's about him growing up in the same neighborhood where The Hate You Give takes place um, in the south side of Chicago. Basically he deals drugs with this gang called the King Lords and he has this really complex relationship with his dad who used to be one of the leaders of this gang. Um, however is now in prison so he kind of lives alone with his mom and he's trying to support his mom and kind of do the right thing. However one day he finds out when he goes to a club clinic to get a paternity test that he is in fact a father. So starts this self-discovery journey for him of trying to figure out who he wants to be and um, how to do the right things and how to be a dad and, and balancing his support system um, when so many of his friends are in this gang and trying to win back his girlfriend, by the way, is not the mother of this um, child. So it's a really complex book with lots of really interesting character dynamics. It's written so perfectly. It is so genuine. And the dialogue in this book is so believable. And that's one of my favorite things about Angie Thomas books is that I just sink into them and fall in love with the characters and the characters feel so, so real to me. I talked a little bit about in my January wrap up how I haven't really felt super connected to books and I haven't, I've experienced books this year, but I haven't cried or I haven't felt all the feels that I was used to feeling honestly um, before like the past six months and I was just kind of experiencing the story rather than living in the world and this book kind of reinstilled this love for me. Um, I was crying at the end of this and I just felt all of the feels with this book. I think that this book and this author deserves all the praise that it's getting. And if you were a fan of The Hate You Give, I would definitely recommend this. 
Um, I would say that I probably would read them in publication order. So read The Hate You Give first and then this because there are a lot of nods to The Hate You Give in this book and also a few spoilers for that book. So I think it would be better to, if you're planning to read both of them, to start with The Hate You Give and then read the prequel afterwards. But yeah, this was flawless. I gave it five stars and I have nothing bad to say about it. Alrighty guys, that is it for my February wrap up. I would be really interested to know what you guys ended up reading in the month of February. If you had a favorite book, if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video and I, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye.